me not.
will be coming from the book of Luke. Chapter 12, starting at verse 16. from the King James Version. And it reads, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull, pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that lay up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life. What shall you eat? Neither for the body what shall you put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have they neither have storehouse for nor their barn, and God feeds them. How much more are ye better than the fowl? That is the word of God for the people of God. Now we'll ask Deacon Trot if you can give us a word of prayer.
Good morning, church. Good morning. You know, I was thinking yesterday, and we all probably heard it from our grandparents. They would say things to you that you didn't understand. Amen. You know, they would say things like, what goes around comes around. Amen. They had another one. My father used to tell me all the time, said, a hard head makes a soft <laughs> Y'all have to look over me. I'm just feeling good. I remember going out there to my, my grandmother who lived next door. And she was always sitting under that big tree with a tobacco stick that she had to walk with. And she was getting on up there. And uh, she told me one day, she looked at me and she had water in her eyes. And she said, boy, Miss Ward caught that gospel train to glory last night. Yeah. Now, I didn't know what she was talking about. I thought she was talking about that train that ran through Broadway. Uh -huh. But uh, later on, I found out what it was. And uh, a friend of mine, he recorded this record. I just I ain't going to stay up here long. I'm going to get out of the way in just a minute. But I just wanted to touch this for you about that gospel train and find out if you do. Yeah.
We saw his heart. Mm -hmm. You got to stand mm -hmm. and believe no matter what. Does anyone have any announcements that they'd like to say at this time? If not, just a reminder, this is Black History Month. And I encourage everybody to go out and find out what our culture has done and contributed to this world. And we'd like to ask everybody to continue to pray for those that you know, that you don't know, for your pastor, for your church, for your members, for your family, for everybody. Because this world is going backwards. And we need prayer so we can go forward. We need God in it. And if um, uh, I'll do that next time. Okay. Well, we're going to ask this wonderful choir and these beautiful musicians if they can give us another selection. And once they do, we're going to hear what the Lord gave the pastor for us to have this day for our nourishment. Mm -hmm. It is not going to fall on the stony, thorny ground. It's going to fall on our heart and be rooted. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to stand on it and abide in it.
Yeah. 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 God just stopped by the house this morning, didn't you? Look for everybody up and see me this morning in different places. That lets me know that you're God. Things are all around. God somehow kept us. Thank you, God, for another opportunity to stand in your house and in this place. And thank you, God. Now we ask you, Father, that you would come on, God. We know that you're already here. We need you to move, Lord. We need you to speak to us, Lord. God, we need you to stand back and let the devil know that you are God and you're God all by yourself. God, we speak to our bodies this morning that they will come in line for healing. We speak to our minds that we will have the mind of Jesus Christ. We speak to our soul that it will listen to your Holy Spirit. And God, we realize that whatever we say and whatever we do, as long as our mind is stayed on thee, we will be in perfect peace. Bless this here, your church. Bless those who are Facebook Live and all who are joining with us. Bless those, God, that may not be able to be here, but God, you got a long arm and you got a strong reach. God, we pray for all the bereaved families this morning that when the word come forth and the music is being played, that their soul would be lifted and their soul would be stirred. God, this morning we lay it down this morning that you can bless us like never before. God, move on Michael Thompson out the way and let Jesus step in. God, have your way this morning, God. Speak through me, speak to me, God, in Jesus' name. That your people will hear your word and your word on it. God, we love you this morning. Look on us, any sin, anything we've said, anything that we've done, we lay down every weight and every sin that's done so easily to set us. God, give us strength to run this race with patience. God, that you will get the glory. We love you today. Thank you for all who come before us, all who prayed for us, all who stood. Now, God, we're here for such a time as this. May we be able to stand and those who come behind us may understand and know that we truly did love you, God. We give you glory today. Bless your preachers in here today. Bless your deacons in here today. Bless your other officers in here today. Bless your members here today. Bless your choir today. Bless your musicians today. Bless God. Bless Father. Bless Lord. Bless. Bless Father. Bless. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Second Kings. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 20, verse 1. Second Kings, chapter 20, verse 1. And God do it. Second Kings. Chapter 20. Verse 1. My, my, my. My, my, my. My, my, my. I see somebody, man. I see some of y'all with smiles on your faces. Some of y'all got tears in your eyes. Ain't it funny how God can work you? And I sure do thank you. Slam on floor. Singing that song. No, it's been on. See, you ain't know that. But it's been on. Let me give you this message. Second King. Chapter 20. Chapter 20. I'm sorry. Second Kings chapter 20. Let me get it clear. Can y'all hear me now? Yeah. Second Kings chapter 20. <coughs> verse 1. From the New King James Version. The Bible reads this way. In those days. Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus said the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then he turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the middle of the court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus said the Lord, the God of David, your father, I've heard your prayer. Lord have mercy. I've heard your prayer. 
I've heard your prayer. I've heard your prayer. I've heard your prayer. I'm keep saying, yo, I've heard your prayer. And I have seen your tears. And surely I will heal you. Y'all see it? On the third day you shall go up where? To the house of the Lord. And I will add to your days 15 years. I will deliver you and this city from, your hand, from the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city of my own, for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. My subject, set your house. Y'all have it. Set your house in order. Since COVID came, my, my, my wife has really uh, taken on a hobby. Her hobby has been uh, looking at houses and homes and refurbishing. She's taken on projects in the house and spent like $20 and came home and seen her sewing and hammering and painting and working and, you know, and, and then when I leave and I come back and I say, can I help you? She'll give me something to do. She'll say, take this and saw this and measure that and paint that. And I do my little part, but when I come back to the king and I looked at what she's done, she has created a, a masterpiece in the house. And when I come home, she's watching all these shows. Oh, uh, do the flip this house and uh, uh, what's the other one where uh, David and Hillary, where they sell houses, amen, and looking at different properties, and she's looking at that. And so I had the opportunity, uh, uh, Reverend Turner and, and Sister Ponzella uh, invited us to their home, and I, we get to their home, and I looked at the TV, and I noticed that they're looking at the same type of show. They got music playing, but as you look at it, you remember, remember Mr. Seymour? And as you're looking at the TV model, you see it, Brother Cliff? Yeah. Uh, they were playing the same shows that uh, First Lady Thompson be playing. Amen. And I looked at that uh, when I looked at this text because I started watching Flip This House. Flip This House, I don't think it comes on anymore, but uh, they come uh, reruns on A&E. And, &E and what, it ha what happens is you find people there see a property. They'll purchase the property. Then they'll refurbish the property. Then they look at the market value and everything that's going on with the house and they see what the potential is on the market. And then they sell the house or they flip the house for a profit. Yes. And uh, such is what happened in this text right here where the man Hezekiah uh, is sick. And he's trying probably like us to find a way to get a healing. But you and I both know that you can get in such bad shape that the doctors can't help you. No matter how your diet is, no matter how much you exercise, you just get so sick uh, that your body just can't recuperate. And the medicine is not working, it just maintains you from pain. But if you're like me, uh, I've taken medicine and while you're taking it, it's doing a good job. But if you miss a dose and you stop taking it, you feel all the symptoms that you had before. But I will tell you today that I serve a God who's able Amen. to lift you. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, uh. You, you can start off with a, uh, 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 the house you live in. And, and right for the show, you ought to take care of that house. You ought to keep your house clean and pay for your house and keep your grass mowed and just, just do what God put the roof over your head. You ought to take care of your house. And then 1 Corinthians said your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So this is the house of the Lord. My body, your body, your body, your body, uh, they belong to God. And God has only given you one body, so we ought to be smart enough to take care of the body. Amen. But the Bible says in Psalm 127, unless the Lord build the house, unless the Lord keeps the house, he that labels, labels in vain. Amen. So don't forget that we need God to put his grace on our bodies in this unforeseen world. In this world of sickness and pollution and disease, we need God to breathe clean breath 
clean air in our bodies. We need God to cover us and protect us from diseases that we can't even see. We need God to do that thing. Amen. And here in this text is the example of what I'm trying to tell you today is you need to set your house in order. I couldn't understand why the Lord and the message that I had written out during the week or every month. Amen. He got a message for you. He's coming. Amen. He got the word. But God was digging with me. He was, he was in my soul today. What he taught me was that I need to come to the pulpit today, not unprepared, but I need to come with no notes. Like today, all I need is God and his word. All I need is the Holy Spirit to move. All I need you to do is listen to what God says and obey God's word and watch God restore your house. Amen. But today, I want you to set your house in order. Hezekiah is the king. He's in between uh, two awful kings. His father Ahaz was king before him, terrible king, who, who, who killed the children and sacrificed the children. He took God's house and took everything holy out of God's house and allowed all the high things and, and witchcraft and all kinds of things to come into God's house. And then the house of God just got desecrated and torn down and people were just lost because they wasn't following God. And on the other side of Hezekiah, before I come back and explain to you who he was, was his son Manasseh. Manasseh, Manasseh was an evil king just like his granddaddy. His granddaddy was so evil that he didn't bury him with the king. If you go back and look at king, it'll tell you that every king that dies, it'll say once they died, they buried them with their fathers. But this man was so evil, they didn't want to put him in holy ground. Amen, somebody. That's a lesson for somebody. Always stay with God. Now, Manasseh is evil, too, who come from a very good daddy. But Manasseh became evil, and he was a miracle child, which I'll explain to you later. But he was evil also. So here comes Hezekiah at the age of 27, following his evil father. He comes in to God's house, and he sets God's house in order. First thing he does was he take out all the things that don't belong in the house of God. Everything that was unholy, he took it out of God's house. Amen. He established the order of God's house the way God's scroll said that he should do it. Amen. Once he set the high places in order, Sister Queen, he took God's house and then he brought in the Levites and he told the Levites, get yourself in order. Consecrate your bodies so you can be ready for the service of the Lord. Because there's nothing like preaching or deacons or members who come to God's house who spend no time with God and then we think on Sunday we're going to be washed from our head. No, you got to wash yourself Monday. You got to wash yourself Tuesday. You got to wash yourself Wednesday. You got to wash yourself Thursday. You got to wash yourself Friday. You got to wash yourself Friday. And when Sunday comes, you are already on fire for the Lord. Amen. Once he got all that stuff in order, to the least he thought everything was all right. And the worship became so high that God came back into the house that he so rightfully had. And that's what people say today. They look at the church. They say, Lord have mercy. The church ain't what it used to be. Do you know that when we say that, that's an indictment against us? Because we're the ones supposed to uh, send out the signal of the church. We're the ones supposed to give to the church. We're the ones supposed to build the church up. We're the ones who's supposed to pray for the church. We're the ones supposed to help the community. We are the ones. We are the church. I got everything in order. But I'm going to talk to somebody today. Right when you get ready to go into your blessing that God has for you, the devil will show up. When Hezekiah got on top of his game, Assyria came. He had everything in order inside the house. And then Assyria came and surrounded the place. What Hezekiah did was he called all the military together. He got everybody in order consecrated for the service. He started building weapons and then he built a massive wall all around the city. He was so smart that he built an outlet for water underground. Now they still have that. When I was at Elon, I actually saw um, the underground water that Hezekiah had is still there to this day. And he was so smart, what he did was he fixed it because Assyria cut off everything around them. And they fixed it where no food could come in, no water could come in. But Isaiah was smart. He was a visionary. And he set it up that even though they cut the water off, they were still able to at least pump water in. But the food started running out. Hezekiah was smart. 
But Assyria, they took Sennacherib and he went to the quiche, took over the quiche, and then he showed, he sent some people to uh, uh, Jerusalem to stand on the wall to mess with the mind of Hezekiah and the people. Do you know he sent men and men stood up? This is what they said. They said, Hezekiah is getting ready to get you messed up. Do you understand that our fathers have overtaken every single country or nation there is? And everywhere we went, their God was not able to save them. And not only was their God not able to save them, your God will not be able to save you. And they put this in the mind of the people, amen. And Hezekiah uh, probably, think about it, he probably started feeling bad, but y'all know what he did? He went before the Lord and presented the trouble that he had. But then the Bible says, where we are in chapter 20, what does it say? In those days, the days I can explain to you that the enemy is on the outside, got them encamped about, and you know people on the inside talking about it and coming against them because it don't look like what they think it ought to look like. Amen. And now he has a sickness in his body. And not only does he have a sickness in his body, the prophet Isaiah came to him. What did he say to him, y'all? Thus said the Lord, since y'all not reading no more, y'all so good now y'all put your Bibles up when the preacher started preaching. Verse 1, he said what? What did he tell him? He went to him and he said, Thus said the Lord. He didn't say it. He said, Thus said the Lord. Then he said what? Shut your house in order. You know what? You're going to die and you're not going to bet. You said that because that's my point. I believe, Deacon King, the problem we have with our preaching today if we prepare y'all to live so well, we don't teach y'all to die well. We teach y'all to live so well that we don't teach y'all to die well. Set your house in order. For you shall die and not live. Everybody in this church, one of these days you're going out of here. There wouldn't be something like Hezekiah. He knew he was getting ready to die. A lot of us think we're going to live forever. You're not going to live forever. Young folk dying. Middle-aged folk dying. Old folk dying. Been dying before we came. And unless the Lord come back, guess what? They're going to be dying after we go. My folk with money dying. Folk without money, what they doing? They die. Funeral homes are full right now. You don't believe me? Working out of mass, uh, and everybody have a drop. Sometimes black will have a whole lot of folk, they have a drop. Sometimes shop have a whole lot of people, they have a drop. Sometimes Alamax have a lot of people, they have a drop. Sometimes Richard Thompson have a whole lot of people. Every now and then they'll have a drop. Sometimes our funeral home, Omega, all of them will have a lot of people, and sometimes they have a drought. Yeah. But guess what? Now everybody got a whole lot of people. Yeah. Folks stacked up on top of people. Yeah. I wish I had somebody. Yeah. Well, we normally would just bury folks. Yeah. You ain't never really heard African American folks who would say they're doing cremation, but now everybody doing whatever they can yeah. because the money tight. Ain't that right? Yeah. So I don't care whether you go about burning or you go about the grave, amen. Guess what? You're going up out of here. But the thing is, if you knew that you was going today, what would you do? Would you set your house in order? Well, I'm not done already. If you knew that you was going out of here today, would you set your house in order? Well, would you make sure, first of all, that your soul is right with your Lord? Would you do that first? Would you make sure that every out and enemy that you have, that you go back and ask peace for that person? Would you forgive some folk that you had the opportunity to forgive? But they didn't know they were going to check out, but now they checked out and you guilty. Would you go back and would you get it right? I wish I had somebody. If you knew that you was leaving, and when you were leaving, would you set your house in order? Would you change the way you act? Would you change the places you go? Would you change the things that you were saying? Would you take off the way that you're seeing and walk with the Lord? Would you do it? Set your house in order. Guess what? Because you're going to die. And you're not going to leave. Hezekiah, verse 2. I ain't going to tell you. I'm going to be out here in a few minutes. 
He said, turn your face to the wall. Yeah. Turn his face to the wall. And he prayed to who? Oh. Now he emailed somebody. Told him about his sickness. He called somebody. Told him about his sickness. Some folk get sick, they want everybody to know they sick. Some folk get sick, you don't even know they sick. Yes, Sister Mark, y'all see said out there, that's funny you hear today. Let me get a you shake your head, yeah, it's gonna be you anyway. <laughs> Sister Mark was sick, I heard she was sick, but she came to church one day during the COVID, amen, when Maple Grove was coming, Archer Grove, and God was using us together. Sister Margie walked into this church. I heard she was sick, but she looked real good that day, amen. And she walked up here into this choir lot right here and sang this church crazy, amen. You know why? Because God had blessed her. Because God had raised her up. And I'm pretty sure she probably felt bad in her body, but she still gave God the praise. And when she started singing in this church, sick in her body, God started doing something to her. Because some of you were standing in one place saying that's all. And when God got good and started moving, you started moving, amen. And when you started moving, we started moving, amen. When the preacher started moving, the people started moving, amen. And God was truly doing something, Lisa, what we pray for him to do, and that's move from heart to heart and breast to breast. That's what faith would do. Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall, and he prayed to the Lord. When you get in trouble, go in your secret closet, turn your face to the wall, and have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. This ain't no cliche. He'll hear your faintest cry. Because I've been so sick, my voice was weak, I couldn't really talk like that. But somehow, some way, God heard me and he answered my prayer. Hezekiah said, remember now, verse 3, you got to be serving God to be able to go to God to remind him of something. If you ain't ever done that, what you gonna remind him of? Hezekiah oh said, remember me, Lord. He didn't say, heal me, Lord, because like some of us do, because I've been there. Lord, if you save me, if you break out of that, I'll be in church every Sunday. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't no say it, then. Lord, if you take care of me here and stop me from playing and doing all that stuff, I'll serve you, Lord. Bring my relationship back there, Lord, i serve you, Lord. Lord, help me pay this bill right here. I can cry out time to you. I give me a help, Lord. And then us. Hezekiah said, Remember now, O oh Lord, I pray. I have walked before you in truth through your word and with a loyal heart and have done what was good, y'all see it, in your sight. And then Hezekiah broke down and he cried. That's all right. Sometimes you just got to cry. Sometimes you don't even have the words to say. You done read out things. He said, Lord, here I am, old niggas. Knee bent, body bowed. <laughs> here I am, Lord. But then when he prayed, look what happened. God answered his prayer. Verse 4 said that it happened before Isaiah had gone out in the middle of the court. The word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn back, preacher, go back. Tell the king that I heard. Tell the king who's the leader of my people. Says the Lord God of David, your father. We need to be faithful so when our children and our grandchildren go before the Lord, we can have a track record where they can say that. Papa served you, Lord. Now, now serve you, Lord. They taught me to love you, Lord. Yeah. And no other help I know. Here I am, Lord. That's what we got to teach them here. Yeah. And it happened. Hezekiah, I mean, Isaiah went back and he told him. And he said, the Lord said to him, in verse 5, I heard your prayer. Look at that, y'all see it? Not only did the Lord hear his prayer, but the Lord saw his tears. Look what the promise was. Y'all still walking with me? Surely, I will heal you. Surely, I will heal you. Maybe I'm the only one whose body is racking with pain sometimes. Maybe I'm the only one, the doctor gave me some medicine, and I said I'm not going to take it, but when I'm going to take it, 
don't act right. Amen. But when I do take it, it gives me some symptoms that make it hard for me to function in the world. So I got to learn to play with it till I can function. Amen. I wish I had somebody. If anybody just got an ache and a pain, you can't even explain it. Amen. You go to the doctor and you pay your copay, you take your bill, you do this and you do that, and it's just something on the inside in, right? You can't explain it, but you just know something wrong. He said, I hear you. When the Lord said, ain't no joke, the promise was, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Then after the promise, there's direction. What's the direction? Mm -hmm. On the third day, where are you supposed to go? Mm -hmm. To the house of the Lord. Yes. Whole lot of folk get healed from the Lord. They go everywhere but to the house of the Lord. Yeah. Folk going everywhere today, and they're scared to come to the house of the Lord. The first thing everybody want to shut down is the house of the Lord. Every worker is essential but the preacher. Every office is sacred but the deacon. Everybody wants to go everywhere and trust in everybody and everything but the Lord. I'm giving you instructions today. Whatever you have a problem, don't wait on Reverend Thompson. This house belongs to you. Yeah. Walk up to this altar by yourself sometime. Yeah. And if you like me, if you can kneel, kneel. Sometimes I can't even kneel. I can't. I can't kneel. Amen. Knees go all the pieces. I just throw my hands up and I begin to talk to God. Yeah. Some of y'all got to start doing that. Stop coming in here for somebody to give you a word. Yeah. Come in with a word already in you. Yeah. Pray for the preacher and God will mix it up together. You mix it with faith and God will begin to move in the sanctuary. Y'all hear me now? Allow God to use you for who you really are. Go up to the house of the Lord. Look at this. He said, I will add to your days 15 years. Hezekiah was ready to die. Okay. Knew he was going to die. Pray and cry. Cry and pray. And he moved God. Press still works. And he said to him, I will add to your days 15 years. And I will deliver you and this city. Yeah, your body might be sick, but I'm going to heal your body. Assyria and the enemy may be all around you, but I'm going to defend you for my name's sake. And then the remedy came. Isaiah said, take a lump of figs. So they took it and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. They tell me that they thought the man maybe have had bubonic plague. Bubonic plague was the black death that killed a whole lot of people. And yet, bubonic plague is nowhere to be found. I heard somebody on CNN say COVID is here to stay. Well, I stopped by today. I just rode to let you know that my God is here to stay. If I had somebody that would pray with me long enough until I got this thing right, we could go on out the door. Isaiah took the lump of feeds. So they took it and they laid it on the boil and he recovered. Hezekiah said to Isaiah, uh, God said, not only if I'm going to heal you, but I'm going to give you a sign. Y'all see it? That the Lord will heal me. And then I shall go up to the house of the Lord. Y'all see it? Then Isaiah said, this is the sign that the Lord is going to give you. And when you go outside and look at the sundial, then you the go down with the sun. I'm going to show you that the hand of the Lord is a strong tower. I'm going to put my hand on the sun and I'm going to back it up. Anybody know who can take the sun in the palm of his hand as hot as it is and make it back up? Ain't nobody but the Lord. Y'all hear me now? God can take whatever you're going through and he can heal you from your discrepancy. Cancer, God can touch your body and dry up cancer in your body. Amen. 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 Amen.
what God has breathed in you, the breath of life. I wish I had somebody that a flavor in the supernatural until God began to bless you. I'm not going to let you go today until God begins to bless you. You won't be here today with a problem that you can't sing the song. But I got a God who is a problem solver. Amen. He can heal anybody. He can be in a relationship. My God can do it. God can put food on your table with no money in your pocket. God can do it. God can take the enemy and make him stand back up off of you and you don't even have a weapon in your possession. God will fix it for you. You can make a mistake and my God will take your body if you confess your sin before the Lord. The Bible says the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and heal you from all unrighteousness. Ain't nobody but the Lord. So Hezekiah is laying on his sick bed and he's praying. He said, Lord, will you heal me? Lord, will you remember what I've done for you? Lord, will you make a way for me? And the Bible said that God took the heart of the prophet Isaiah in the court and told him to go back and tell that man that I'm going to heal your body. And once I heal your body, I want you to go to the house of the Lord. Keep it once your body get healed. You need to keep on coming to the house of the Lord. Let God use you. Let God heal you. Let God make a way for you. He'll fix it for you. He'll turn your whole life around. He'll
go to the Lord and try to hurt. I'm gone when I tell you this. The Bible says, a house divided cannot stand. All right, God? If you, that's what a disease is. When your body and your good cells is fighting against some bad cells, and now your body is divided and you're struggling, right? Same way in your house. If you don't have peace with your mate, if you don't have peace with your children, with your mother, your father, your mother-in-law, sister, I don't care who, if you don't have peace with people, the devil will tear your house down. And so he take that same trick. He bring it into the church. Fight preachers. Instead of us standing on the wall together, praying together, and helping these churches, we come together to lift up this city in the name of Jesus. I'm in my corner, they in that corner, and then when one corner look like it looks better than the other corner, now you're going to talk about that corner and nobody coming together for the Lord. That's why I love digging. Now, diggers would do this. I'm going to give all y'all, I'm going to give diggers credit. I'm going to give you your flowers while you're here. Deacons can be from another church and find out somebody else is a deacon and automatically the respect shows up in the house. Yeah. I've seen it in the church. I've yeah. seen it at the conferences. I've seen it at restaurants. Deacons will come together in prayer. Yeah. 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 Preachers, yeah. Yeah. we so proud. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a car. Once he, got, once he got healed, he got prideful. Mm. And he brought somebody into his house. And showed him too much. Yeah. He took the glory for what God had done. Yeah. And God had to put him back in his place. Yeah. I just go, the mission for this church is not to tear this church down and build it up, but it's to rebuild this church for the glory of God. Yeah. If you don't know what the mission of this church is, you know what it is today. Yeah. Whatever your gift is, whatever your talent is, yeah. whatever your position is, is to rebuild this church yeah. not for our glory but for the glory of God yeah. and if we do it for the glory of God yeah. guess what he's going to glorify you yeah. 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 so the devil shows up he tries to divide the church divide the deacons and the pastors divide the ministers divide the members and I'm going to say this to you don't answer just say it don't pray this week if you talked about situations more than you talked about the kingdom of God, you need to renew your mind. If you talked about people more than you talked about Jesus Christ, you got a spiritual problem. Y'all hear me? If you follow other spirits other than the Holy Spirit, we need a revival. Pastor Thompson is called in a revival. 12 noon, wherever you are, 20 minutes, whatever you normally do at 12, fast. Don't do it for 30 days, y'all hear me? Wherever you are, whatever you're doing at 12, I want you to fast. Whatever, and what I'm saying to you is whatever you normally do at that time, take at least 10, 15 minutes and have a little talk with Jesus. Take through a scripture, and read it and let it saturate you. And guess what? Then go on about your day. 30 days, y'all. We need a revival. We need a healing. Too much going on to be fussing, fighting, and arguing. Been doing this a good while, man. I seen families fall out, come in this church. I've been to other churches and did revivals and couldn't figure out why I'm looking at one person that looked like this person over here. And people will tell you, won't they? Families divided. They're in the church, but they divide. They ain't speaking. Some of them over here, some of them over there. And then they thank God, hear their prayer. God, the devil don't understand that God is not in the midst of dysfunction. Y'all hear me? God is not in the midst of dysfunction. So we got to come together as the body of Christ and begin to function together. Yeah. Whatever your call is, that's what you got to do. 
God called me to preach. So I, that's what I do. I show up and I try to preach God's word. And I don't try to try to preach. I tell you what he's saying. And I'll follow you home and I'll do your business and I go on to the house. Listen, whatever God called you to do, you need to start doing it. Right here. Some folk in other churches doing stuff for their church, their church over there, and they want to be here. And these people been here. It may be for a season where they come in here and they help Archie go over to a certain point. But then God wants them to go back home and help them get their pastor on. And I'm going when I say this, you can stay in the morning prayer. But what gets me is I have so many people who call me. My wife can attest to you ask them. They'll call me, they'll see me in the store, Deacon King, and they'll come up and they'll say, I need prayer. And they'll start telling me about what they're going through. And I say to them, don't you belong to so-and-so? Um, that's your pastor over there. No, but I can't talk to him. But then he's not your pastor. I don't ever want to hear y'all say this again. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to hear you say, don't ever say this again. Pastor Thompson, uh, I know you're busy. I'm never too busy for you. My first priority is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And after I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, my next priority is to make sure that you are okay. Yeah. Spiritually, mentally, and physically. So nothing is too hard for me because I'm going to give it to God. Amen. And either he's going to fix it, he's going to show me how to help you fix it, or he's going to send somebody by that will fix it. Yeah. Don't never say, I'm, too, I'm never too busy for God, and I'm never too busy for you. Y'all got that? Amen. If nobody else is praying for you, that's the talks of praying for you. I don't care whether you like me, don't like me, love me, don't love me, hate me. I don't care. I don't care if you don't sow a dime in this church. If I see your face in this church, I'm praying for you. Are y'all hear me? And what I want y'all to do as a church, after you fast and pray, I want y'all to start praying for one another. And don't write the person down on your list you like it. Write that person down that you know got all against you. Put that person first. That's how it ain't. Love your enemies. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Yeah. And won't God bless you? Yes. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You, don't, you don't return evil for evil. You, you have the evil for good. Y'all yeah. hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to teach y'all something. Won't God take me when I fly away and be in rest? I got to tell you, you hear me? Yeah. But just don't tell you this. I'm telling you. Set your house in the world. When I pray, there's somebody who needs to really need to get your soul together. If you're having a hard time, y'all can meet me up here, y'all can meet me in the back. You don't have to meet me, just meet the Lord. Tell him all about your trouble, you hear me? And let God bless you. But if you need God to do something like the COVID restrictions, you still can come. I got one coming, if somebody else wants to, y'all can come. Just kind of distance out a little bit. But it's all right, step out into the aisle. See, y'all got to step out. I guarantee you, those of you who are standing in the middle, they ain't moved out, Mr. Cook, they need something from God. But y'all know what? Y'all just like, if I gave all of y'all who still stand there coloring books, all of y'all would probably draw a line around the black line, ain't that right? And color inside the lines, ain't that right? But today, y'all, we got the color outside the line. You got to let God do something he's never done before because you and I need a miracle. We need a miracle. Can't nobody fix your body but God. Can't nobody fix your mind but God. Can't nobody fix your medical condition but God. Can't nobody fix your relationship but God. And can't nobody fix this church, not just this church, but any church but God. So today, Archie Bro, we're going to open the door. We're going to let him in. Let him in your heart. Let him in your house. Let him back in this church. Revelation 3 and 20 said, The Lord said, I stand at the door and knock. He's yeah. still knocking. Yeah. Anybody hear his voice? Invite him in. The Bible says, He'll come in. He'll sit down and have dinner with you, Sister Queen. Ain't that sweet? 
And the Bible says in Luke, don't nobody break bread like the Lord. Y'all remember when the mayor's road? He broke bread, Sister Martin. Sister Scott, they saw his hands. Nail prints in his hands. And the way he broke the bread, the way he talked, and we walked away, they said, did not our hearts burn? God began to talk to you. He put some on you. I want you to pray with me. All of those who have stepped outside the lines, those who are inside, wherever you are, begin to tell God right now what you need. Tell it. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Lord, I need you to strengthen your members you gave. God, I need you to heal your church. To heal your preachers. Heal your deacons. Heal your trustees. Heal your observers. Heal your members, Lord. Heal those who may be at home. Sick. Why this racking with pain? Why are we talking about flipping houses, Lord? There are those who are homeless. Lord, they need a way made. Give God a hand clap of praise. 